Hydrostatic pressure is blood's response to gravity as it sits in our bodies. Hydrostatic pressure creates another type of potential energy that helps move blood through the circulatory system. Hydrostatic pressure is created when a column of fluid, such as blood, is acted upon by gravity. The density of the fluid and the distance from a particular point also matter. In the case of the body, that particular point is the heart. In formulas, hydrostatic pressure is represented as a capital P. We can see the relationship of each element as they fit into the formula for calculating hydrostatic pressure. Hydrostatic pressure is the measured in millimeters per mercury and is equal to the height of a column multiplied by the gravity multiplied by the density of blood. You've most likely been to the doctor and had your blood pressure taken. Have you ever wondered why they take it at your arm? When calculating hydrostatic pressure, part of the formula is to measure the distance from a point. We consider that the heart to be point zero. Hydrostatic pressure is negative when it's above the heart and positive below the heart. By taking blood pressure at the level of the heart, you are minimizing an error in reading by minimizing the effect of hydrostatic pressure. In fact, blood pressure plus hydrostatic pressure gives us the total measured pressure. Let's take a look at a few examples to see how a patient that is supine versus a standing patient changes the measured pressure. Blood pressure is the same throughout the body. So if we could stick a little meter somewhere in the, in the body at any point, we should get the same blood pressure. In our example, our patient's blood pressure is 110 millimeters of mercury. When calculating hydrostatic pressure, the level of the heart is zero. And because that is because there's no change in distance from the heart to the heart. When a patient is supine or lying flat on their back, it puts the entire body at the same level of the heart. So at all the same points in the body, the hydrostatic pressure is also zero. To get the measured pressure for each level, we add the blood pressure of 110 millimeters of mercury plus the zero millimeters of mercury of hydrostatic pressure to get a total of 110 millimeters of mercury for measured pressure. So let's take a look at the standing patient. Remember that real blood pressure is the same throughout the body. So again, our patient has blood pressures of 110 millimeters of mercury at all levels in the body. Hydrostatic pressure has to do with how far from the heart the area of, that is being measured is. Closer to the heart is less pressure, further is more. Also remember that above the heart is negative pressure and below the heart is positive pressure. In the standing position, we can say that the head is negative 30 millimeters of mercury of hydrostatic pressure. The heart then would be zero. The waist could be about 50 millimeters of mercury and the ankles being 100 millimeters of mercury of hydrostatic pressure. The measured pressure at each level then is simply calculated by adding the blood pressure and the hydrostatic pressure together. Let's start at the head. So we have 80 millimeters of mercury of measured pressure at the head. That's negative 30 plus 110. That gives us our 80. Moving down to the level of the heart, we have blood pressure at 110 millimeters of mercury added to our zero millimeters of mercury of hydrostatic pressure. Our measured pressure is 110 millimeters of mercury. Moving to the waist then, we had 110 for blood pressure and we're adding on 50 millimeters of mercury in hydrostatic pressure, making the measured pressure at the waist 160. Moving further down into the body, we can see that the ankles are at 210 millimeters of mercury of measured pressure. We got that from adding 100 millimeters of mercury of hydrostatic pressure to the 110 of blood pressure. This example shows us how the weight of the blood increases 
the further from the heart the blood is. This image proves the point in another way. This column of water is the heaviest at the bottom and the lightest at the top. If we were to open a hole on the side of the tube, the hydrostatic pressure would push the water out of that hole. Because the top hole would have less pressure, it forms the weakest jet. The more pressure, the deeper we get into the tube, the stronger the jet that comes out of it. Think of this bottom area as the area of the ankles. Our ankles have the most hydrostatic pressure. 